When it comes to dealing with enemy close air support, what do you usually do? Run, hide, or pray that you don't get destroyed? Well, it's no surprise that helicopters and fixed wing jets are a threat to armored operations. So how do you deal with them? And before I go on, my name is Fan Fantasy, and I cover tactical numbers of games like Gun Heat PC. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to stay up to date. In Gunner Heat PC, there are some missions that have some enemy helicopters that you need to deal with. And so I figured I want to take this opportunity to talk about what to do when there's an enemy fixed wing or a helicopter. And it's not entirely impossible to deal with them, but they should be considered a threat to your operations. In the US Tank Platoon Manual, there are some standard procedures or guidelines for dealing with them. Firstly, we need to understand that tanks are actually capable of dealing with enemy air. And with most tanks in Gunner Heat PC, we should be able to deal with them. You got your coaxial machine guns, as well as your sable and heat rounds that could knock out a low-flying helicopter or plane. However, I don't think you can knock out a jet at this point. So there are two types of air defense. There's the passive air defense and the active air defense procedures. The first line of air defense is usually the passive one, which is simply being aware and alert that there is a possible threat of a fixed wing aircraft or a helicopter that could be in the area of operation. If an individual or a vehicle identifies an enemy threat, then it is reported by saying contact red air, then the direction either north, south, east, or west. If the threat is not directly engaging you, it is just best to bypass it, or you can go to the nearest cover and consumant area. The worst thing you could do is fire at it when it's not directly engaging you, and by doing so will give away your position to your enemy. If the platoon leader chooses to find consumant and cover, it is best to keep about 100 meters apart between each vehicle. The platoon should also be prepared to engage if necessary. Although passive measures are the first thing to do, there are times when you will need to engage and that's called active air defense. The first step in an active air defense is to initiate fire, meaning your intent is to fight back by making the aircraft alter its movement and attack. In the US tank platoon manual, there is a technique called the wall of steel, which is when the tanks and the armored fighting vehicles alike use their machine guns to fire at the incoming helicopter. Its purpose is to make it harder for the helicopter to make an attack run on you because of the volume of fire. The more firepower, the more harder it is for them to get a clean line of sight. When we're using our machine guns, it is best to lead your aim ahead. And for reference on this graphic, and since I'm not an American, a football field is about 109.7 meters, and half of that would be about 54 meters. So that is a suggested lead against helicopters. And if it's facing towards you, aim at the center and slightly above the fuselage to get a good hit. And the second step is to make the enemy harder to destroy you by being a non-linear target. Sometimes being too close as a line or column is a bad idea. You can do so by moving away at a 45 degree angle from the enemy flight path. You could also disperse your platoon at around 100 meters between each vehicle. By doing so, it will make it harder for them to destroy you. And thankfully, in Gunner Heat PC, you can actually utilize the formations and the spacings, and if possible, move to a covered and concealed position. So in summary, there are passive and active air defense. And if necessary, tanks are capable of dealing with air threats. That depends on your platoon and how well it's covered, concealed, its formation, and the firepower. Even though Gunner Heat PC is still a work in progress with some of the mechanics, you can try to utilize spacing and the terrain for cover. I hope you guys find this helpful and educational. I'll be doing a mission that involves an enemy helicopter in the area of operation while we attempt to capture some key objectives. And the mission that we're going to be doing is called Hillside Havoc Part 2 of 2. And you can check out Part 1 in my previous video called How to Attack as a Company. And you can check that out on the top right. And so for the situation, we are playing as 1st Platoon, tasked with the destruction of enemy forces at Objective Ash, Swamp, and Oak. The enemy comprises of BMPs and T-55s, and for us, we do have two platoons of M60A3s as well as CAS attached with us. So looking at the map right here, the enemy is in the vicinity of Objective Ash, Swamp, and Oak, as you can see on this map. And Objective Ash is going to be a critical objective for 2nd Platoon to hold out on the hill. They're going to be supporting us by fire as 1st Platoon is going to be attacking Swamp and Oak. We're going to go around Objective Swamp to clear out the enemy. We're not going to go directly into the town, but we're going to go around it. And then once it's cleared, we're going to go into the vicinity of Objective Oak to clear out the enemies there. So yeah, pretty straightforward and simple. And that is our mission. Alright, so I'm going to pause the mission for us, and we're going to move forward, and looks like we are in a column formation, 
and second platoon is to our left and they're going to be supporting us by fire advance and destroy enemy and objectives so before we do that let's call in some closer support to clear the way and one thing i really appreciate about gonna hit is just how simple and straightforward the missions are and so it's a really good way of learning and speaking about learning hopefully you guys have been enjoying my content so far i've been trying to make it more meaningful by adding some learning elements to it and not just some gameplay but yeah if you guys enjoy that type of content let me know and one thing you'll notice in this update is that they did change the weathering effects where it's a lot more realistic instead of it being so random where it just changes from clear skies to rain and we should expect better FPS performance now in this update which is a win and I do hear our F4 Phantom and they added the Doppler sound effect which is really neat and since we are approaching towards Objective Ash we're going to be moving in a wider formation once we are in this open area here and this is a key this is the terrain that Second Platoon is going to be holding out. So to prepare for that, we're going to traverse our gun to the right, switch to thermals, and start scanning. And I do see something. It looks like it's a, a PC and on the way. Nice. And there is another PC to the right. Let's start moving in a line formation. Might be behind the trees. Don't see him. And since second platoon is moving behind us to take the hill, we're gonna move right and give him some space. I'll keep our eyes behind the tree. But yeah, if I was that BRDM, I would fall back as well too. So that might be the case. Let's see. So far, no contacts up ahead. I'm gonna keep looking towards our left. And second platoon is right behind us. Oh, choppers, contact red air north. Uh, 100 meters, space out. And prepare to engage. Yep. There you go. And let's get a 50 cal up. Get our heat rounds. Nice contact destroyed. Wait, that thing's still up. All right, now there we go. Oh my goodness, did we lose anyone? No, we didn't. Okay, and let's space back to 25 meters. Let's do an echelon right as we're moving up. So what I just did there was that I switched to our 50 cal right away just to kind of get more suppressive fire against the helicopter but I'm surprised that heli took two heat rounds instead of one like the other one but yeah I'm curious to see where that one hit all right so right now I'm gonna call in more cast to support us and I'm gonna move an echelon right because we're not gonna go right into town but we're gonna go around the town to clear around it that would be a bad idea if we go inside the town so we're going to start moving up right now. And switch to our thermals. Now should be right in front of us. Oh, that is a BMP identified. On the way. Whoa, what? Okay. There you go. Looks like he drove up towards the berm. Interesting. Okay. We're going to keep moving now. Switch to our thermals. And another contact. BMP. On the way. Another BMP. On the way. more on the way 
Man, how many heat rounds can they eat for breakfast? And on the way. Alright, we're gonna move up. Oh, there is a tank toward 12 o'clock and on the way. I think that target is destroyed. There it is. Firing out. Oh, come on. I think that went through him. Jeez. Oh. Tank. Got, looks like it just tank. Not identify. Alright, so there are tanks at, looks like, past Oak or near Oak. Uh, let's keep moving. So it looks like we have taken objective swamp. But yeah, imagine the infantry in the town with RPGs. The outcome would probably be a lot different. And looking behind, I'm a little bit worried about second platoon. I think they're taking some casualties right now as we speak. And yeah, looking at that, it's not much that we can do, but let's keep moving. And we probably expect some tanks to be at objective oak, so let's call in more casts right now. And let's switch to our formation to a line. Let's keep restocking as well too if we can. Alright, so this should be enough. Right now we are looking pretty good. Right now no casualties. Maybe except for 2nd Platoon. Kind of worried about them. But yeah, let's keep moving towards Oak. And we're going to slowly move up towards this hill and then peek down. And it looks like our cast is going to do an attack run. I'm going to hold and see what he hits. Alright, so he did hit something. And since that was a hit, we can probably expect something to be in front of us. Oh. Something right behind it. Yep, on the way. Target destroyed. On the way. Nice, target destroyed. Oh man, did we lose one of our tanks? Yeah, we did. Oh, that's unfortunate. We were so close. Oh man. All right, so all path forces have been cleared and we have taken all the, most of the objectives. Uh, at least let me go up to capture it. Not too sure why Objective Oak hasn't been checked off, but all forces have been destroyed, so we're going to take a look at the after action review. So one of the cool new features that they added is the mission results in the after action review. And so you can see here, crew loss for NATO is 6, equipment loss for us is 4, and shots fired is 115, which makes sense since we were attacking and we were trying to take down those two helicopters. And for the pack, they lost 14 crew, 12, and 61. So in summary, I would say... Even though we completed our objectives, we did take a lot of loss. Second platoon was completely wiped out and we did lose one of our tanks in the process as well. I wouldn't say it's too bad for a platoon, but still a big loss for second platoon. So yeah, I would say it's it's all right for us. We were engaging the helicopters and we managed to get a heat round in and destroyed it. And over here was the second MI-8 that we were engaging. It was kind of surprising that it took about two rounds of heat to destroy him instead of one. But, yep. And then you got other tanks that were shooting at it too with Sable. Yep, Sable rounds. I think heat rounds should be good enough. And then right here was the first BMP at the second objective. It's kind of funny that he moved up so that his bottom was exposed. And then we took him out. This one, for some reason, took so many heat rounds like it was eating for breakfast and you can see here most of the time it was hitting the top and i could have used sable for this but decided to just use the heat rounds instead so at this point in the mission second platoon was engaging the t-55s in the last objective but they lost as you can see here and yeah quite unfortunate and lastly we destroyed two of their t-55s with a direct hit but we managed to lose one of our m60s in the process of it and I think Cass destroyed the other T-55 as well too. And that was pretty much it. 
And yeah, I said my overall thoughts in the beginning of the After Action review, but hopefully you guys have learned something new in this video where I talked about what to do in a in a situation where you need to deal with enemy air. And I can't wait to see what Gunner PC will do with the air mechanics and things like that. So yeah, stay tuned for the development of Gunner PC. But as always, if you guys enjoyed my video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to stay up to date. I'm almost at 5k and I'll be doing some giveaways on my Discord server. So if you haven't joined, please do so. And it's a good way to connect with me as well. And I'll see you guys in my next video.